Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, The Craft Man. Today we're finna talk about 3D printer. Oh, snap. Craft Man done gone crazy. Y'all, Craft Man has never used a 3D printer in my life until just the other day. And now I done gone crazy with it. In this episode, we're going to talk about 3D print, resin base. How that you can get the finest details that you probably cannot believe but might be able to, and you can do it affordably. And additionally, we're going to be seeing how well the Elegoo Mars goes up against the inner cubic photon. Yes. Today's episode is brought to y'all by Synthesizer. Several of y'all have asked me, uh, Crab Man, why don't you get a 3D printer? And honestly, I just never got one because it's a whole new technology for me. And then I said, you know, I might could use this to make figurines. This is not something that I would be using for production because I need to get just one good print of a character. Then from there, I can make molds of it. And from them molds, then I can churn out me some uh, plastic copies out of a durable plastic resin. How does resin base 3D printing work? Is it magic? What happens? This right there is a screen, is a LCD screen that is going to flash up different images. So right now this is liquid, but if you expose it to UV, it's going to cure, all right? So, you know, let's say you got your little thing that you're going to be uh, 3D printing. So when it's going to print the uh, feet, that screen, it might show two circles like that right there. All right. And then it's going to work up, up, up. And then when it gets to that body, it might just be flashing a light. There's just a circle in the middle. And then it might get to this part. And it might be a shape like that right there. That slides up and down. The first couple few layers is going to stick to the bottom of this. It's going to move up, you know what I'm saying? And it's going to basically pull the object up out of this. Um, if you're thinking about 3D printing, probably what you're picturing is FDM, AKA Fusion Deposition Modeling. They take a roll of what it looks like to me, a uh, weed eater string, and then feeds it through a tip. And that tip moves around in 3D, uh, three X's, melts it out in the layers, and then it builds up a 3D model. And this is the biggest free range chicken I got. Thanks to my buddy I Rod for sending me this one uh, off his uh, obviously big 3D printer. Uh, resin base works by using UV light to cure very thin layers or slices of resin at a time. So here we go. We about to set things up. This is the inner cubic photon S, the very first 3D printer that I ever have touched in my life. I ordered this one off Amazon's, and this was not my first choice. It was my second choice. The one I wanted to get to begin with was out of stock, but it's very, very interesting what happened about that. With the resin 3D printer, you got to level the bid plate. That's the bid plate right there. The first time I did it, I did one with the instructions in the uh, manual and use a piece of paper like they said, lower. So it's really important that the bid plate is parallel to the little screen at the bottom of the vet right there. Y'all probably already noticed that I got gloves on today. Gloves are going to be real, real uh, important when handling this. This is not something that you want to be contacting your skin. All right. Instructions say to feel the vet about a third of the way with uh, resin, so I kind of did that. I installed the little software that came with the thumb drive, the USB drive, but it gave me a black screen. And that was kind of frustrating. But I did some little uh, reading up on it and learned about this little thing called Cheeto Box. 
am I saying that right? Cheap tube box. Anyway, cheap tube box is free and it can also export right out to any Cubic Photon S format as well as uh, other little formats. This model right here was scanned by Art Lab 3D Print and uh, that's my buddy Benjamin up in Kentucky and he sent this to me STL format, stereolithography format. So I scared it down to a small size and I said, you know what, if this thing can print things this small and keep that smoothnessity of details, then that means it can print big things just better, even good too. So I saved it to a USB and this came with the uh, 3D printer, by the way. You've got to do it one way and then you do it the other way. Let's see. Print. Then I waited. At this point in the program, Craftsman was excited to be making a small, tiny, little teen ounce of free range chicken. My excitement was gradually turned into not excitement. This is very disappointing right here. As you can see, there is no uh, little free range chicken stuck to the bottom of the beer plate. So what I can see is that we got part of the model uh, stuck to the uh, the FEP, the film. So what I'm going to do is to take this little screen, this little filter that came with it, and then filter this back out. As you can see, we got the free range chicken legs sticking up off of that. And so what I'm going to do is take this. And by the way, I'm using the 99% isopropyl alcohol. You know. And I got my gloves on. Y'all already know that. So I'm going to take and just kind of go around and take this opportunity to clean up all this. And then we can see that that's going to be kind of stuck to it. That's all right. Let's see. I'm going to take my other hand here and see can I pop this thing up just a little bit. There we go. And see that? And that popped up without having to get in there and scrape it. Keep that thing flat. Not like that, not like that. You don't want to jab a hole. At the bare minimum, you would want to keep your little fingers up underneath this for support. But we got that off of the but man that was gonna be pretty neat right though you know hey we're gonna learn some things doing this and instead of uh, editing all this out I'm just gonna leave it in here and show y'all that the craft man messed up on this one and then let's see what we can do to maybe fix this so I posted on Facebook uh, looking for some suggestions some help and several people reached out to me and I learned some things on how to deal with that. But anyway, posting online led to a really, really big thing called Elegoo sent me a message. Craftman, we got the Elegoo Mars in stock. We want to send you one. I said, that's interesting because that's the company I originally was going to go with. The reason why, because it is cheaper. And I was very grateful that they was going to send that to me for free. All right, while I was waiting on the little Illigu model to arrive, I continued to dial in my settings on the inner cubic photon S. Let's talk about how come these might have failed right there. I think the bottom line is the feet was not enough surface area to stick to the build plate while it's going up and down. It printed it for a while, printed it, and then it got to that big area in the middle of the, uh, the object, and that big old wide area right there, and it says stop. And then it's just doing this, and this stays down at the bottom of the vent. And I continue to learn things steady to share that with y'all. And Crab Mama saw me getting discouraged up out there and did some studying on my behalf. And she come up out there. She learned about this thing called the Flint Reed Level Method. We're going to come up one, two, three. My machine's set on silent, so it's not beeping. Yours will probably beep when you do this.
I had the little Cheetu box make me a raft. All right, that's what that's called. And see how wide that surface area is right there? That gives something real good to stick to the build plate while it's moving up and down. So it could be a combination of that and also a uh, craft bomber coming out here doing that uh, that level technique on that flint lockwood uh, level technique that they did. Now they say that you can go ahead and snap these things off uh, before you do your post cure. Craft man, what is a post cure? Well, that's when you want to take and put your uh, object out in the sunlight or either if you got your little uv lamp like y'all ladies like y'all do your nails and things with that you can uh you can do that so i'm probably gonna put the little chicken out in the sunlight for a little while and maybe craft mama let me get a little uh, curing lamp or something let's see what do y'all think about this oh. about to do a head-to-head -head test. The settings is the same for both of these. The layer size, the height, the exposure times and all that. It's really just going to be to look at the final print and see what the quality is, if there's any difference between them. For the resin, I'm going to use the resin that I've been using. couple of things happened that really uh they really really surprised me on this uh the elegu uh Mara completed quickly how come is that craft man went into this thinking that there was going to be no difference in speed because i used the same settings on that one same settings on that one uh every layer the same side the same thickness on the layer you know i used 0.05 layer uh millimeter and i said you know a second uv exposure per layer so i said well logically they're going to complete at the same time what i did not take into account though is the z axis uh, apparently the elegu mars moves up and down more quickly so even though it's down here exposing for eight seconds and this one down exposing for eight seconds in the time this one moving back up and then coming back down this one just going a little bit quicker before i get these two things confused i'm going to take one uh scrape it off pop it off and then put that in a ultrasonic cleaner right there see this the way i plan on using this is just for cleaning uh resin prints and things now if you was going to use this with say uh jewelry and things like it's probably intended for then what you might consider is instead of just pouring alcohol into this and putting your, uh, you know, putting your little resin pieces down into it. Instead, you might want to put water up into this. Then take your little Ziploc bag, fill that bag with uh, alcohol and put your little part inside that, close that bag up, put it in there. And then the little ultrasonic actions could still get through uh, the bag, so to speak. I know I'm only going to be using this for cleaning uh, pieces like that right there. So I'm just going to dump me some alcohol straight up into it. Oh, excuse me. There's something happening here. And what it is ain't exactly there you go. Ultrasonic looking. I 
All right. I'm going to let the uh, rubbing alcohol evaporate off of that. There's a pretty good price difference between the two units right there. Because of that, I expect that there would be some difference in quality of the final prints. So I was very surprised that not only did uh, this one print faster, also it just looks, to me, looked the same. Had I gone with that one to begin with, I would have saved money. But then also had I gone with that one, what if I had just a perfect print right out the get go? And then I would not be able to make a video showing y'all some of the different issues that you might run into. And by the way, the issue that I encountered with this right there is not just because of that particular unit. That's a good unit. If you got that one, hang with it. It's a good unit right there, the Photon S. What I ran into, you could run into within a 3D printer. Also, if I get to having some more problems with it sticking, I'm going to try it out right there. You know, anytime somebody's seeing you something for free, I think it's just human nature that you naturally will want to say good things about it. But also, I got to be objective with y'all and to be 100% honest. My opinion is that, you know, I will go with the Elegoo Mars, take that little extra money and buy me a, a, you know, ultrasonic cleaner, buy some extra resin, maybe some little thing like that. As far as one advantage that I have noticed with the Photon, this one right there is definitely a lot quieter than that machine right there. And then for cleaning off the uh, bill plate, I asked Crab Mama for a, a little Tupperware container looking. And look what she gave me right here. Look at this. And so she gave me the most uh, catawampus one that she could find, which, you know, is okay, because I'm going to be putting, you know, things in it that ain't going to be food related. It don't need to be the best. How long your print is going to take on a 3D uh, resin-based printer is only determined by the height. All right. So whatever the height is, that's how long it's going to take. If I print one of these, it's going to be the same as if I did 10 of these. All right. Does that make sense? I'm going to try something. I'm going to add Craft Mama to zoom in. That's the best we can do. Other way. Okay, focus on that, please. Thank you, Craft Mama. And also, Craft Mama, while you out here, thank you for the most catawampus is a uh, Tupperware container that I ever have seen. I like it. Let's see. That's good. For most of this video, I have been using the green resin right there. And to me, the color don't really matter because uh, I go ahead and be priming my, my uh, eyes. You know, I'm just trying to make a little prototype. Then I make a mold of it and then make casts and do all that kind of thing like that. So for me to find a, a look at the thing, it really just don't matter what color it is in my case. But if you're trying to make a uh, object that you would like the resin to be a particular color, and some of the resin also may have different strengths and things like that, you know, that's something to consider. Just for reference in this video, the settings that I use for the green uh, resin right there is these settings right here. If all that don't make sense to you, don't worry about it. It will make sense real quick when you start uh, messing with the 3D printer. If you ever get your resin 3D printer, here's some things that you can do that will help you have success right out the gate. Consider using you some rafts for your prints, all right. Don't do like I did, just stick it straight on the bed. Use you some supports to connect the raft to your object. 
and try to orient that thing 45 degrees. Now, if you still get pancakes things sticking to your uh, film at the bottom of your vet, then consider using you some uh, PTFE lubricants. And if things still ain't working for you, then you might want to do a uh, little sanding trick. Uh, I have not done this yet, but all you basically do is take you some sandpaper. Uh, I wouldn't go no more coarser than 220 grits. Lay it down on a flat surface. Plate glass will be good. Sandpaper face up and do even the distribution and sand that thing for just a couple minutes. Keep that thing flat as you can do. Thank y'all so much for looking at this video. And uh, if somebody had you upset, then do not let the sun go down on your anger, but go to them and y'all uh, split a sandwich and drink something good. I love y'all and keep steady crafting.